Good morning, church. We miss you. We wish you were here. Uh, we thank you that you are able to be here. Uh, and we pray that as we worship together, that the spirit of the Lord will fill you and that you'll be made new. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We pray that as we gather together in worship, that you will speak to our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. So today, church, we're going to, to pray to the Lord. We're going to sing. Every song that we sing is going to be a supplication. So join me. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty our streets and land set your church on fire when this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray come set your rule and reign our hearts again increase in us we pray unveil why we're made come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls holy spirit come invade us now we are your church
thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song. Sung by flaming tongues above, praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, out of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my ebony. Hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus taught me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to from danger interpose his precious blood oh to grace how great a daily I'm constrained to be let thy like a feather, find my wandering heart to be prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts of I adore your love above all else. To my heart, sing your praise above all else. I adore your name above. to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy precious blood. my heart, Lord Jesus, speak that my soul may hear. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus, calm every doubt and fear. Speak to my heart, Oh, 
Scott Stell family from the Bird family. We want to wish you a good Sunday um, and we also want to say that we miss you. Uh, hope that you've been safe and enjoying your family time during this quarantine. Um, we did have our new little one, Miss Cassie Bird. We look forward to bringing her back and showing off the new addition to the family. Um, look forward to seeing y'all hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you again for being part of our worship service online this week. We hope that you get blessed by the reading of the word and the preaching of the word and then just praising God in your hearts with us. And um, I just want to say a, a quick announcement, really, uh, really more of a praise report. So I want to thank everybody who's been uh, coming out on Fridays these past two weeks uh, to distribute food and deliver food to different people. We've had a great success. God's really blessed us. We've passed out over 370 food baskets to people uh, who, who would need them. And so we just wanna thank you. We've had over like uh, over 20, uh, easily over 20 volunteers that have come out and just uh, shown a great effort and um, you know just helped us out with delivering food baskets and loading people up in their cars with them and, and we've just had a great time. So it's been a wonderful blessing. So thank you again for doing that. Uh, that's just one of God's huge blessings for us uh, in ministry. So we're just fortunate to be able to do that these, uh, these weeks. And so we're gonna be planning on doing that also for maybe the next three Fridays. So if you haven't come out yet and God spurs your heart, Come and join us, it's a great time, okay? And let other people know also that you you know may need some food, they can come pick up some baskets or we can even deliver it to them, all right? So that's a big praise report. Also, as far as our finances go with the church, we're doing pretty good. We were a little bit 
um, uh, we lacked a little bit on the budget, on meeting the budget this week, but uh, overall we're doing really well. So uh, as God spurs your heart and um, your generosity, go ahead and continue giving to the Lord in whatever ways that you can, okay? Remember, we have four ways right now, really, that, that you can give. The first one is through our website, again, at sbcep.org. The other way is through our text giving, and that is 915, you'll see it on your screen right there, 915-213-7140. Okay, you can text it, just follow the directions, it's very easy, or you can mail it in. Our address is 10015 Locker B Avenue, and the zip code is 79925. Okay, so you can mail it in, and then the other way, you can just come, drop it off, in in our office or in that uh, slot box by the prayer room and then we'll pick it up okay so again thank you for your generosity you guys are amazing uh just know that god's doing an amazing work here at scottsdale through our ministry and so i just pray that uh you continue praying uh, a lot for us okay and everything that we do uh remember if you do want to show up uh, for our services we are starting our services already so we're meeting on sunday mornings just the time is at 9 30 okay so 9 30 a.m we don't have sunday school yet uh but 9 30 a.m is when we're starting our worship service okay so if you know anyone who maybe can get online and doesn't have access to this information uh, we are sending blasts out through emails but some people don't have emails so if you know of anybody like that just let them know and make them aware of our new time frame okay so we love you uh we just uh we can't wait to just be around each other again and uh you guys are, are just a, a joy to our hearts so we love you take care and we'll see you next week lord willing god bless you guys hey good morning to you scottsdale baptist church it's another great day in god's kingdom um as you guys are watching this there's another group of us who are gathered together at 9 30 sunday morning for a live service in the uh, worship center and so while I'm thankful to be able to be there, I'm also thankful to be with you right now by way of uh, online service. So it is actually nearly six o'clock on Thursday evening when I'm recording this. You guys will be watching it at 930 or sometime thereafter. Uh, but I'm grateful that, that you've been with us. So I've got a question for you. Like I said, it's about six o'clock on uh on Thursday evening when I'm recording this. Have you ever had one of those days, I'm sure that you have, where um, it just seems like you had so many things on your plate, so many things that are just kind of hanging out there, unfinished business that you needed to take care of that, man, no sooner did you get started on one thing than something else comes up and that needs your attention before you even got finished with what you were working on before? Well, that's kind of my day. It's been one of those days today, just a crazy day. Um, I guess the biggest plus for me in this day is that it started out the right way. And let me explain that to you. Uh, my typical morning will be that I will get up in the morning. Duana and I will have our reading of scripture and we will pray together. And generally, I will get up and go exercise. She will go do her, the kind of exercise that she prefers to do. And then we get back and we start getting cleaned up and ready for the rest of the day. So that was this morning. And that's what we did. In other words, I started out the day on the right foot. And I am so thankful for that, that I did because I believe that that laid the foundation for the rest of the day. Now, when I got to the office, all of this stuff was hanging over my head. And um, so anyway, so if I sound a little bit tired during this presentation, the only reason is because I'm a little bit tired. So, but I pray that this message that I'm going to share with you today is going to be a blessing to you, that it will be instructing, uh, and that it will be helpful to you as well. So we're going to be talking about a Christian's call to prayer. Uh, also, I'm, I'm titling this Praying for Spiritual or praying for our leaders. Part of that is the, the spiritual leaders. We're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 2. So we're, we finally are starting on a new chapter. We're going to look at verses 1 through 8 today. 
Uh, I hope that you've taken the time to download the notes, whether it's on, you go to our website, you go to our Facebook page. If you do that, if you haven't already done that, you can go there, you can download the notes, make a copy of them, and just it will help you to keep up as we move along through this passage of Scripture. Several things that I want to point out to you, so I'm going to do my best to move quickly through this. But we're in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and we want to read verses 1 through 8. I'm reading from the New American Standard. And it says, it reads this way. First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority over you, so that we may lead tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying, as a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Therefore, I want men in every place to pray, lifting holy hands without wrath or dissension. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for this passage of Scripture. I can't imagine what Paul must have been feeling as he was writing these words to Timothy. The sense of urgency in his own heart as he, he's giving instruction to this young pastor wanting him to get it right, wanting him to, to give the right kind of leadership to this congregation. Lord, the, the need is no different today. The need is no different for me, a, a, a pastor of over, four, uh, over 30 years now. And I still have this need to make sure that I remain a man of prayer, that the people that I serve are a people of prayer. So Holy Spirit, would you please guide us through this time of study? And I pray that my brothers and sisters who hear this message would be encouraged, that they would be motivated, that they would be instructed. And I ask you to lead us to be the people of prayer that you want us to be. And right now, I do pray for those in leadership over us. I pray for President Trump. I pray for Vice President Pence. I pray for our legislators. I pray for those who are on Capitol Hill, uh, legislating federal laws for us. I pray for our Governor Abbott. I pray for those who assist him in this state government. I pray for Mayor D. Margo. I pray for Judge Samaniego. They have been having to make some very difficult decisions. I ask you to give them wisdom. My prayer is that you would give them godly wisdom. And that they would lead from a godly attitude. So, Father, bless us now as we study your, your precious word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So, hopefully you've had time to get hold of the notes. And uh, several things that I want to point out to you. And the first one is this. And that is the priority of our call to prayer. This is found in the first part of verse 1. Where it says, First of all, then, I urge you. So that word, first of all, in the Greek language, it's protos. And so we know when, when we, we think of a, a prototype, in other words, a first type. So this word protos means first in time or place. Also, it means first in rank. So which one is it? What is it that Paul is saying here? I believe that when he's saying, first of all, then, he's talking about the priority of making uh, of prayer, the priority that prayer needs to be in our life. And why do I say that? Well, it's because chapter one is basically, that's already a preamble to everything else that he has said up to this point. So when he says, first of all, then I believe that he is saying of first importance, Timothy, this is what you need to be doing. So first of all, Pastor P6, first of all, follower of Jesus Christ, this is what you need to be doing. 
So then he goes on to say, I urge you. Obviously, that's a that's a word of urgency, a word of, of man, make sure that you do this. Make sure that this is a priority in your life. What is that? Well, it is that those prayers and petitions and entreaties and thanksgivings be made to, to God. In Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 6 and 7, Paul writes to the church of Philippi, he says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension or understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul is saying there, instead of worrying, instead of being anxious, pray. Pray. But in this passage of Scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 2, what is he saying? I, you know, first of all, then I urge you with these entreaties, these prayers, these petitions, these thanksgivings, come before Almighty God. So here's part of what I'm thinking, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a challenge to us. It's a challenge to me personally. It's a challenge to the Lord's Church in the United States of America. Could it be some of the problems that our nation is facing politically? medically, without a doubt, spiritually, culturally, could it be that it has less to do with what is happening on Capitol Hill and more to do with the prayerlessness of God's people in this nation? Churches and Christians really need to do less fighting, less judging, less gossiping, and more praying. So it is a priority, ladies and gentlemen, for us, those of us who call ourselves the people of God, to be a praying people. That must be a priority in our lives. Now, let's look at the people for whom we pray. If you have your outline, that's the next blank, is the people for whom we pray. Look at the last part of verse 1, the first part of verse 2. He says that we are to pray on behalf of all Men. Now that word men is anthropos in the Greek, so it literally means man faced, but it's talking about all human beings. In other words, not animals. There's not any place in scripture that tells you to pray for your animal. I know I have friends that want me to do that. Pray for my animal, pray for my dog, this, pray for my cat, that. Look, I love you guys, but the Bible doesn't tell us to pray for animals. It does tell us to pray for on behalf of all men. Now, we're in, it's talking about on behalf of. Uh, that's also translated as over or above or for the sake of. So I've had people actually come to me and say, Pastor, let me, let me pray over you. Well, what they are saying is, let me pray on behalf of you. Let me pray for the sake of you. And that is an act of love when they do that. And I just, I am so blessed when people tell me that they're praying for me. Or they will come up to me and say, let me pray for you, Pastor. Man, that, that just means so much to me. So we are to pray on behalf of all men. And then he says that we are to pray for kings. Uh, the, the, the Greek word is basileus. And uh, I think of the word basilica. Uh, but, but this word basileus means a leader of the people. It's also translated prince or commander or a lord of the land. So it's a little bit general. In its, in its description. But then he goes on to say, and all who are in authority over us. In other words, it's talking about prominence. Um, so I would say this, it's not just the governmental leaders that, that superintend our governmental issues in our land. I believe that it is also talking about the spiritual leaders. And ladies and gentlemen, God has assigned spiritual leadership in his church. These are people that God has given the charge of, of shepherding the flock, of giving governance, governing the flock of God, giving leadership to them. That is a calling that comes from God. We need to pray for those who are in authority over us spiritually. We need to pray for those who are in authority over us governmentally in terms of our our, the, the government of our everyday lives. Now, it could be that some of you are thinking, well, I don't like our president, 
Or, well, I don't like the king of this land. Or, well, I don't like the, the ruler of that, that land. So let's just step back a minute. And let's just think about the context in which Paul lived and ministered. And that he is writing right now. When you go back to the book of Acts and you read about the Apostle Paul's experience in Ephesus. And Timothy is in Ephesus ministering to the people that Paul had ministered to before. Before the threat of persecution uh, caused him to have to leave. You go back to the first part of chapter 1. Paul said, as I urged you upon my departure from Macedonia, remain on at Ephesus. So Paul has been at Ephesus. Because of the, the, because of the threat of persecution, he's having to leave. He's going to go to Macedonia, but he leaves Timothy there. So now he's writing back to give him this instruction. What I'm saying is this. Paul did not live in a Christian-friendly environment. He didn't live among Christian-friendly governmental leaders and rulers. No, these were polytheistic, many of them. Some of them were, were Jewish leaders within the Jewish synagogue in Ephesus that were coming against him. And yet Paul is saying, pray for them. Pray for them. So let me just tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter who is on the hill? It doesn't matter who is in the White House. The command for us is to pray for those in authority over us, whether governmentally or spiritually. But now I want us to look at the purpose for these prayers. This is found in the second part of verse 2. The purpose for these prayers, how do we know that? Because it begins by saying, so that. So that is a purpose phrase. In other words, here's why you need to pray for them, or here's as a result of your prayers, this is what should happen. So the purpose for these prayers in your outline, and that is so that, in other words, in order that, or to the intent that we may lead. That has to do with our lives, the kind of lives that we live. What kind of life is it that we should desire to live well? And what is it that, that we should pray for in these prayers? Well, that we would live a tranquil life. The word tranquil is the idea of stillness. Uh, also a quiet life. This has the idea of being undisturbed, of being peaceable. Now, again, I'm thinking back to Paul's life and the many narrow escapes that he had had, but also the persecution that he had undergone. And he describes that in 2 Corinthians. Paul did not live an easy life, but can you just Imagine that's something that he always wanted. He didn't want to be pursued by other people. He didn't go around picking a fight. He was just compelled to preach the gospel. And as a result of that, where he was ministering, there were people who opposed that. Jewish and also polytheistic people just coming against him. But I can just see that in his heart of hearts, he always wanted to lead this quiet tranquil life. And then he goes on to say this kind of life in all godliness and dignity. And I just share my heart with you for a little bit. One of the things, the beauties that I have seen from this COVID-19 pause, mandatory pause that we've been in, I've been officing from home now. I'm, I'm filming from my, my office at the church building right now. But I've been officing from home. I just got to tell you, I have loved that. Not because it allowed me to be lazy, but because I just wasn't in so much of a rush. Um, man, before that time, it just seems like my life was getting caught up in so many meetings and so many different services and so many different activities that we had to be to be at. And the COVID-19 thing has just caused us to push the pause button on a lot of these things and possibly the actual stop button on some of the things that we've been doing. It's just given us a chance to take stock of some things. But man, I was having video meetings at home. That means I didn't have to get dressed up. It means that I didn't have to travel. So I spent more time at home. And... I really, really enjoyed it. 
And my fear is that as we get things going back again and we're coming back to the office, life is going to go back to the, the busy cycle. I really think that we as Christians need to be content with tranquility. We need to be content with quiet. Psalm 46.10, the psalmist says, and this is a very busy king writing this, but he says, cease striving. Another translation says, be still. Be still. Be, be tranquil. Cease striving and know that I am God. It is so easy to wake up in the morning and you hit the ground running and you you are go, go, go all through the day and you never took the time to just stop, be still, be tranquil, and just know that God is God and spend some important time with Him. But that is exactly what He says that we need to be praying. That's what, our, our, as we pray, we need to pray for that, that the government, that our rulers, both spiritual and governmental, would allow us to lead tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. So let's move then to the power to whom we pray. This is actually my favorite part of the whole passage. But in verses 3 through 6, it says this. It says, this is good. And acceptable in the sight of God, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. So there's just a couple of things that I want to really point out to you in, in this, this awesome, very easily could be its own sermon uh, just a couple of things I want to point out to you very quickly, though. First of all, there is one God. Now, let me read a few verses to you. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 through 3, this is part of the, the Ten Commandments or the, the preamble to the Ten Commandments. But God is speaking, and he says this, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. That's commandment number one. You shall have no other gods before me. Why? Because he is the only God. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39, it says, Know therefore today and take it to heart that the Lord, in the Hebrew language that's Yahweh, that the Lord, he is God in heaven and uh, in heaven above and on earth below. Listen, there is no other. There is no other God. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, it's the beginning of a, a passage of Scripture in, in Jewish, in Judaism, it's known as the, the, the Shema. But this verse says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. So these Old Testament verses are telling us there is only one God. And now, in this New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 2 the Apostle Paul is saying again, for there is one God. So ladies and gentlemen, just in case you haven't gotten the message yet, there's only one God, Yahweh, the Jewish God, the, the God who, who Jews are his chosen people. Those of us who are Gentile, who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ by God's grace and mercy, we have been grafted in. But the Jews are still God's chosen people people. Now, it also says that there is one mediator between God and men. Word mediator is one who intervenes between two. It's also described as a, a, a medium of communication or an arbitrator. It also is described this way, um, one who is uh, who forms a compact or for one who is involved in ratifying a covenant. So I want you to see some New Testament verses about Jesus and how it describes Jesus. In Romans chapter 8, verse 34, it says, Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Try to imagine that. Jesus, who came to this earth, 
who died for our sins, died a, 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 a horrific death, but listen, raised a victorious resurrection and then experienced an, an incredibly miraculous ascension back to God the Father who will someday return back for God's children. He is right now in heaven interceding for us. He is praying for you because he loves you so very much. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, and then there are some other verses in, in Hebrews and also in the, the, the letter of Galatians, where it describes Jesus as the mediator of a new covenant. But finally, in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, I love these verses of Scripture. It says this, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, who has passed through the heavens, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things, just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. So this describes Jesus, this mediator. He is also our great high priest. He is the one who intercedes for us. He has mediated a new covenant for us. And because of that, he is our great high priest. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not need to go to a human priest or a human high priest to get forgiveness for your sins. You go straight to Jesus Christ who is already interceding for you to God. He is already doing that for you. He is the one that you need to go to. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. In the second chapter of 1 John, so 1 John chapter, one, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, describes Jesus as, um, as, as basically our lawyer, the one who is re representing us before Almighty God. So Jesus is our great high priest. You do not need another human priest or high priest to act to go to God on your behalf. You do not need that. Jesus is the mediator of this new covenant. Finally, in your outline, it's the call to peace in our prayers. That's verse 8, where, where he's wrapping this up. And the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, uh, I want men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath or dissension. So this is the call to peace in our prayers. And men, this word right here is speaking specifically to men. doesn't mean that when they can't pray, doesn't mean that women shouldn't pray. They should. He just, right now, he is turning his attention more specifically to us than to saying, Men, when you come together to pray, you should come together to pray. Lifting up holy hands. But listen to this, without wrath or dissension. So this is the second time that I made reference to this in, uh, in this passage of Scripture. God is calling his children to be at peace with one another. Listen, we've got, man, we've got a spiritual warfare going on out there. The Bible tells us, and I pointed to this last week, our, our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. It is a spiritual battle. So we need to quit fighting each other. We need to start praying with one another, praying for one another, and praying for our government and praying for our spiritual leaders. So that leads me to the conclusion, and that is this. As Christian citizens, we must see our responsibility that God has entrusted to us to pray, to pray for this nation, to pray for this nation's leaders. And to pray for our spiritual leaders. 
May that be the case at Scottsdale Church where God has given me the blessing and the privilege of, of serving that if you're listening and you're part of another congregation, then you pray for those spiritual leaders. We all need to be joining together to pray. Pray for this nation. If Christians will do our part, I truly believe God will do his part. Now, our, our one of our elders, Larry Wilkins, is about to close out the service. Listen, if, if God has been touching your heart, especially about there's one God, there's one mediator between God and men. You want to know more about what that means and, and that connection between that truth and your eternal destiny, your eternal life. Man, would you would you please get in touch with us? We have a website, sbcep.org. Uh, you can call uh, the church office. It's 915-595-2811. Or you can write office at sbcep.org. Just say, I want to know more. I need to talk to someone about how to have this, this life that that preacher was talking about. Look, we're, we're just here to help you. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brother Larry Wilkins, and he's going to close us out, and he's going to close us in prayer. But please, please take the opportunity to reach out to us so that we can help you with your next steps. Until we meet again, God bless you. Thank you for joining us at Scottsdale Online. But a reminder that we are having services in the building at 9.30 on Sunday morning. We're practicing social distancing and we're encouraging, we're requiring actually that everyone wear a mask when you come in. And we're asking that if you are sick, please stay home. Take care of yourself and come back when you're feeling well. Uh, prayer, such an important discipline. Uh, we are blessed to have a pastor who brings God's word unapologetically to God's people. And the fact that God would want to hear our prayers is just amazing. But I'm so thankful for it. It's an important discipline that we would practice daily. The Bible tells us that we're to pray for our leaders, as Pastor Six said, among others. Sometimes we forget to do that, but I tell you, I think our leaders need our prayers. Uh, I know that as an elder of the church, I certainly covet the prayers of people. But we need to be praying for our president, his cabinet, the Congress, our governor, his staff, uh, our mayor. And I ask that you would pray for the elders of the church. Ultimately, it's important that we practice this discipline. God will honor it. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your word to study it. We thank you, Father, for the mystery of you hearing each of our prayers. Your word tells us if we hold iniquity in our heart, you will not hear. So I ask that as we begin our prayers that we would ask you for forgiveness. And I thank you, Father, for the forgiveness that we have for all of our sins, the sins of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, through the blood of Jesus Christ, for all who know him as Lord. For those who don't know you as Lord, I ask that they would that you would just impress on their hearts the importance of searching for you with all your heart, because your word tells us when we do that, we'll find you. Father, I lift up our president, his cabinet, our Congress, our governor, our, our mayor. Lord, I pray that you would bless our governmental leaders, that they would seek you and make choices for this nation that bring you glory. I pray for revival, that your churches, Scottsdale and others, would band together in a way that we will hate our own sin, but love the world, that would cause you to desire to bring revival. We need it. Oh Lord, we covet revival. We ask that you would move, that you would move in a strong way as you have done in years past. This is what our nation needs that we would return to you. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Oh, that you would be our Lord again. So Father, forgive our sins. Draw us back to yourself. Move in our leaders. Get a hold of this country. Get a hold of your church, your people. Bless those who are hurt, hurting, that need your healing touch. Move. This day is a day you made. We thank you for it. 
We thank you for it. Thank you for the air we breathe. You bless us daily. Father, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, we thank you for joining us. Friends, we thank you for joining us. And a reminder again, 9.30 Sunday mornings. We are both airing these broadcasts uh, on, uh, on the internet. And we are also having in-church service. And we encourage that you would come. If you do, bring a mask. Again, if you're not healthy, if you're sick, stay home and get better. And then come see us. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for today. God bless you. I'll see you. Thank you.